Hey, hi. This is a hard math question. It's a GMAT data sufficiency question in probability. In addition to probability, it also tests some basic concepts involving absolute values and number properties. Let's take a look at the question. Set A contains distinct integers. Probably there is one word which is very important in this question. It's this adjective distinct. Set A contains distinct integers. What does set A comprise? 2, 4, 6, minus 8. Obviously, these four are all distinct integers. And then X and Y. So, X and Y are one distinct, which means that they are not equal to each other. They are not equal to 2, 4, 6, minus 8. And they are integers. So, they could be positive. They could be negative. They could be 0. One of those two could be 0. Not both. Right. When two numbers from the set are selected, out of the six numbers, we are selecting two numbers from the set and multiplied. What is the probability that the product is less than zero? Product is less than zero. Essentially, we'll have to compute the probability that the product is negative. Two statements given. Let's take a look at the statements as always. A little while down the line, five answer options that we are familiar with. Let's circle back to the question. What is the probability that the product is less than zero? So, we'll say the probability of that number being negative. We'll call it as P of N. Right. So, we're going to say the probability that the product is negative is equal to a 1 by 7, is equal to 1 by 32. Some such number is what we are going to come up with. Probability always takes values which range from 0 to 1. So, if you get anything from 0 to 1, then the answer to the question is available to us. So, the answer is essentially a number from 0 to 1. The answer to the question is a number. The data is sufficient when we have one single value, when we have a unique value. So, establish the ground rules. What kind of an answer we are going to get when the data is sufficient. Now, let's take a look at statement 1 and see whether that would give us a unique value for the probability that the product of those two numbers is negative. Start with statement 1. It says x into y is not equal to 0. This is what set A comprises and we know that x and y are also integers and all of this set A comprises distinct integers. Right. x into y is not equal to 0 essentially means that neither x nor y is 0 x comma y both these numbers are not equal to 0 both are not 0 can both be positive yes that's possibility 1 we'll call it as p1 x and y are both greater than 0 in which case 2 4 6 x y will all be positive how many positive numbers do we have we have 5 positive numbers minus 8 will be the only negative number in this what a possibility too. Both could be negative. They are not 0. That's what they are saying. So, x and y both are negative. In that case, 2, 4, 6 will be positive. Minus 8 x, y will be negative. We will have 3 positive and 3 negative numbers in the set. To find out the probability that the product is negative, how do we go about it? We will see it in the next slide. We will just look at one more possibility that's there and then we will go to that. Right? I will probably try to jump the gun. Right? Possibility 3 is one of these two numbers is positive, the other is negative. It really doesn't matter which is positive, which is negative. I'll write both those things will all get kind of consumed in this one single possibility, which is x is greater than 0, y is less than 0, positive, negative, or x is negative, y is positive. One of the two numbers is positive, the other is negative. It really doesn't matter which one is what. In that case, how many positive numbers will have? 2, 4, 6, and one of these two being positive. So, we'll have four positive numbers and two negative numbers. So, number of positive and number of negative numbers in this set A could be one of these three possibilities. Five positive and one negative, three positive and three negative, 4 positive and 2 negative. Will this make a difference to the final answer? The probability that the number, the product of the two numbers selected is negative? Yes, it is going to. Let's compute the probabilities for P1 and P2. Establish that these are two different numbers. That would suffice to say that we don't have a unique answer. In possibility 1, we have 5 positive numbers and 1 negative number. We are selecting two numbers at random. Right. So, essentially, how many ways can I select those two numbers? I can select those two numbers in 6 choose 2. Right. So, 6 choose 2 is 6 times 5 divided by 2, which is equal to 15. So, denominator for us is 15. What is the favorable case? We want the product of those two numbers to be negative. When will the product of, let's say, two numbers A times B be negative? When one of these numbers is positive and the other number is negative. How many positive numbers do we have? 5. How many ways can I select one positive number out of these five positive numbers? Five choose one is the number of ways in which I can do. How many negative numbers do we have? Only one. How many ways can I select that one negative number out of one? In one choose one way. Five choose one is five times one, which is five. Five by 15 or one by three is a probability if we had five positive and one negative number. 
let's check out what would the probability be if I had three positive and three negative numbers, which is essentially if X and Y are both negative. The denominator is still going to be 6 choose 2, no problem at all. The, prob the product is going to be negative when one number is positive, one number is negative. How many positive numbers do we have? Three. How many ways can I select one positive number out of it? Three choose one ways. How many ways can I select a negative number? Three choose one because we have three negative numbers. Three choose one is a three. Three times three is equal to nine. Nine upon 15 is the probability if I had three positive and three negative numbers. So we don't see a unique value. Five by 15 could be the answer. Nine by 15 could be the answer. And there is one more possibility when four of these are positive and two of these are negative. So we are not getting a unique value. We don't need to do what I did in this slide. It's just sufficient to know that we do not know unique value for the number of positive and number of negative numbers. At this stage, at this stage, you could have said that we will not get a unique value. I just listed down all possibilities because we are in a learning mode. And I also walked you through how to compute the probability. Had it been a problem solving question, how would we have gone about proceeding, right? So whatever we discussed here is just for knowledge reason. It's not required. You could have walked out of the statement saying that it is not sufficient at this point. Statement one alone is not sufficient. Rule out answer options A and B. Let's look at statement two. Let's see whether that is sufficient. It says modulus of X is equal to modulus of Y. What does modulus of X equals modulus of Y mean? It could mean that X is equal to Y or X is equal to minus Y, right? For example, modulus of three will be equal to modulus of three. Modulus of three will be equal to modulus of minus three. So both numbers could be the same or one could be positive, the other could be negative. These are the two possibilities. So if x is equal to y, just look at it. It could be three equals three, minus three equals minus three, zero equals zero. So these are all the possibilities. If I just plug it in, I'll say two, four, six, minus eight, three comma three. Two, four, six, minus eight, minus three comma minus three. I'm just looking at one possibility. Two, four, six, minus eight, zero comma zero. In all of these three instances, we are not having the elements of set A being distinct integers. 2, 4, 6, minus 8, 3, comma 3, 3 repeats, which means we don't have distinct integers in set A. The question explicitly states that set A comprises distinct integers, which means X cannot be equal to Y. Both of them cannot be positive, both of them cannot be negative, both of them cannot be zero. So only possibility is X is equal to minus Y. Neither X nor Y can be zero. Right? That's if they are zero, then again the distinct is removed. So one of these numbers is going to be positive. One of these numbers is going to be negative. So in that case, how many positive numbers will we have? We'll have four positive numbers in this set and we'll have two negative numbers in this set. When we have a unique number of positive numbers and negative numbers to a set, we'll be able to compute the required probability. So statement two alone is sufficient. Again, to walk us through how to compute this probability, had it been a problem solving question, denominator will be 6 choose 2 because we are selecting two numbers out of the six numbers at random. Now we need the pro product to be negative. One should be positive, one should be negative. We have four positive numbers. Selecting one positive number will happen in 4C one ways. Selecting one negative number will happen in 2C one ways. One positive and one negative. Four times two, which is equal to eight divided by 15. This is the probability with the information available in statement two and the question stem. Question stem primarily because it tells us these numbers are distinct, which means both cannot be zero, both cannot be simultaneously positive, both cannot be simultaneously negative. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. That tells us we have four positive numbers and two negative numbers. Therefore, we are able to find a unique value. Statement one alone is not sufficient, two is sufficient. Choice B is the correct answer to this question.